Hello, welcome once again to EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about Adobe Photoshop CS6, and in particular, Camera Raw 7.0, which is probably my newest and latest greatest favorite feature that they've modified in Photoshop CS6. I liked Camera Raw in the past, I thought it was great, but I think now it's, it's 10 times better. What they've done with these sliders in the initial screen, absolutely incredible. What I'm showing you right now in front of you is a photo that was taken uh, prior to me obtaining Photoshop CS5, or CS6, my apologies, edited in Photoshop CS5 in Camera Raw 6.0. So you're going to see all the old sliders here. The reason why I'm showing you the old one is because I want to show you what happens when you double click on an older file that you modified in the past on a past version of Camera Raw and how you can bring it back to the new version. Down here there's a little exclamation point, you click on that exclamation point and it automatically updates your sliders. Basically the contrast slider has been moved up right underneath exposure, the recovery slider is now turned into a highlight slider. The fill light slider is now turned into a shadow slider. And one of the most important things to take away from it is they've made the slider start by default in the middle, not all the way to the left. So that's really important because you can now reduce the highlights or increase the highlights. And you don't just start at the bottom at the baseline and recover from it like they had before with recovery. So it's really incredible what you can do with this. So what I'm gonna show you is how you can make HDR images from a single raw file. Uh, you could do it in the past. I've shown it in the past with uh, Photoshop uh, CS 5.5 with Camera Raw 6.0, but with 7.0 it's even easier and it looks 10 times better. So this is not a uh, pseudo RAW or pseudo HDR. My apologies. This is a five exposure HDR image that has been run through Photomatix and Photoshop to get this image that I have here. But I want to show you how you can get a somewhat similar effect with camera roll 7.0. So let's go ahead and open up the zero exposure value version of that uh, of that um, bracketed series. Now by default camera roll is going to open up in a smaller window pane. If you want to make it larger just go ahead and click that little button right there and it will make it the size of your screen if that helps you. And it, sometimes it does when you want to get into those nitpicky details. So a couple things you want to consider when we're, when we're doing this uh, modification, this HDR modification of a single raw file are three or four sliders that are going to be really powerful for this. That's going to be highlights, shadows, and clarity and contrast. So to start this we want to pull some of the shadows out. So the way we pull the shadows out is not move to the left because that's going to make the shadows more shadowy. Go to the right. Look at the control on that though. That is really just affecting the shadows. It's not affecting much of what's going on in the sky with that highlighted area. It's just affecting the shadows. Incredible. So I'll move that all the way up and modify the shadows and get those shadows really pulled out. Highlights. If you go all the way up with the highlights, it's just affecting the highlights. That's incredible. You go all the way down and now we start to pull the, push those highlights away and make it more HDR-ish. Let's see what we have so far. Okay, we're getting there. So now let's bump up the clarity. That's where we start to get that HDR look. That's where we start to modify that detail and start to really pull in some of that HDR feel. What are we missing for this HDR image, or pseudo HDR, is going to be some color. You know, because with the HDR you do tend to get that nice uh, color palette that's really thick. So we can go ahead and bump up the vibrance. I don't want to bump up the saturation because vibrance and saturation work kind of hand in hand. Vibrance is a little bit slower. It happens at a, at a much slower pace, I think, as far as the amount of um, color that you get from that. That was at plus 59. And see what happens when we take saturation to plus 59. It starts to get more, much more saturated than the vibrance does at that same length. That's why I like to stick with the vibrance one. I don't do too much with the saturation because I don't like oversaturated HDR images. It's just not my style. So I don't, I don't do that. I just leave it that way. Contrast, that's another thing now. So if we, we can reduce the contrast, and that doesn't really do much to help us uh, for an HDR effect. But if we increase the contrast, we do start to get more of that HDR effect. Now we need to talk about HDR and what HDR is. Sometimes we forget about that as HDR artists. HDR is high dynamic range. And what is dynamic range? Dynamic range is the difference. B is the uh, ratio of the lights to darks in an image. When you do a high dynamic range image, you have a high ratio between light and dark. Therefore, you get that uh, really, um, I don't want to say distorted, um, you get that difference between light and dark 
that you wouldn't get from a normal exposure because you're extracting, that's the word I'm looking for, extracting dynamic range from that photo in the tone mapping process. This is essentially what we're doing here, is a, is a mild tone mapping. We're, we're, to, we're mapping the tones. We just map the shadows. We just map the highlights. We're essentially doing an HDR image right now without, it doesn't even have to be called pseudo. This is HDR. We're, we're modifying the dynamic range. So let's look at the preview now. We have a much more HDR looking image. And this, this might even be a great stopping point, but this is bugging me up here. So instead of cropping this, what I want to do is just heal that area. So I can go to the spot removal tool and select the spot that I want to get rid of, which is going to be done with the red. And then the green is the spot that I want to replace it with and start to pull some of that. Uh, there you go. And I'm just clicking and dragging inside there um, to make that bigger or smaller. If you want to make the... Uh, spot removal larger or smaller you just go ahead and click on that outside area and click uh, click on it hold it and move it up and down and that will modify your spot that you're fixing so another thing let's do some adjustments with the adjustment brush i want to make these clouds a little bit more uh potent if you will so i'm going to go to auto mask and make a control point here and the reason why i go auto mask is because when i click on that area it's going to select areas in the photo that are very similar to that that allow me to do some selective modification so if I show that mask, it's showing me all those areas that that is going to modify as I go through it. So I can increase the exposure, decrease the exposure, but I want to add some more drama to it. So let's just go ahead and bump up the clarity a little bit. And let's see what we can do with the contrast. Bump up the contrast a little bit, and we'll select this spot too over here. And let's see what happens when we select this one. Hmm. Maybe not so much. It kind of starts to distract you from the area. So we'll go ahead and erase that last one. And uh, we'll just delete them all and then go ahead and start from the beginning. So we bumped up that contrast and we bumped up add another one here. Okay. So that's good. That's good for me. Now if we want to add a brand new control point, you just select new and select a new control point. Let's see if we can go ahead and push this highlight back a little bit further. That's right here. And we look at the mask on that and it shows you all those areas that are masked with it. So mm, starts to get milky. If it starts to get milky, don't bother with it. Just leave it alone. Um, that milky effect that you get. I don't know if milky is the right word for it, but that's what it appears like to me. I don't really like it too much. So and there's not much we can really do about those highlight areas. Uh, we can play, we can modify as much as we want, but we're better off just kind of leaving them alone. So we'll go ahead and delete that one as well. I'll just delete that point. So all I really did here was add some, uh, some more um, oomph to those uh, dark areas to make it just a little bit more HDR-ish. Now the next thing you can do is go into the, um, click back on the zoom tool, which will get you back to the main area where you're doing your modifications. And we can add some noise reduction to this as well. So with the noise reduction, you're gonna go ahead and move that slider on over, which is the luminance slider. And you're not gonna really see what's going on unless you get really close in, or you can go and press alt and hit the mask button and move that back and forth. And that shows you what is being affected uh, when you mask. So we want to mask out that area because we don't want to reduce the noise on everything, just on some of the things. Now, it's looking pretty good. Let's see where we started. Let's go back to the original pane. This is where we started. And this is what we've got now. We've extracted a lot of dynamic range from this. Now, what we can also do is um, do some split toning if we wanted to add some more saturation, make it a little bit more uh, looking like a, a uh, sunset. That's when we look at our preview with that. Looking a little bit more sunsetish, So I like that. Well, we'll keep that the way it is. So let's just go ahead and open this up and see how it compares to our HDR image. So this is our five exposure HDR image. There was five raw exposures at zero exposure value, plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two. And then we put it through Photomatics and Photoshop, did some modifying, did some editing to it, made it look pretty vibrant. And this is what we've got out of Camera Raw. Not that bad. Uh, now this one's obviously more yellow. We could do some Photoshopping to that, or even in Camera Raw, we could have added more yellow to it if we wanted to. So it's really endless what you can do now with the Camera Raw 7.0 when you have a good solid exposure to work from. That's the important part, getting yourself a good exposure to work from. If you have a good exposure to work from, you can really extract some detail. 
So that's why I love Camera Raw 7.0 and even more so why I love Photoshop CS6 and what they've done with it. Man, it's incredible. Just when you didn't think that it could get any better with from CS5.5, they, they did CS6 and, and they just blew, blew the uh, competition out of the water. So there really is nothing better than Photoshop. So I'll, I'll preach that all day long. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you do not have Photoshop CS6 yet, get the 30-day free trial. See what you think. Camera Raw 7.0 comes with it. Do some raw editing with it, and I guarantee you're going to see that uh, this is the way to be. So start doing your editing there. All right, take care. Have a great weekend, everyone, and make sure you check this out. See what you think. Take care.